You may be seated in here. Thank you for participating in the worship. You want to just prepare your hearts for the word of God. Hallelujah. We know when people worship God, it makes their hearts soft, pliable to the word of God. Without worship, we seem insensitive and cold to God's spoken word. Come on, somebody. That's why God is looking for true worshipers. Those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And worship is something that seems to be something fading out nowadays. Being replaced with mere entertainment. But I love to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. And I believe worshiping God must require of me my best. Uh, uh. Hello. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Baby, believe say, if he's worshiping or sound good, he must sound raggedy and all over the place. But uh, uh, uh. when I worship the Lord, I give the Lord the best I got. Amen. It may not be the best you got, but you must give him the best you got. And it's still worship, no, so. Amen. Praise God. So, if you can sing it like I sing it, you sing it how you can sing it. But you worship God, no, so. Yeah, but when I worship in God, I'm giving him everything. I don't care who they say me, they show up. May show up with me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I'm glad to, because I'm glad to be in the family of God. What do you say? I'm glad to be in the what? The family of this should not be taken for granted. There's a time that church people, and I say church people, church people taught us that all of us are children of God. And I found out in the word it is not so. Because there's a requirement to become a child of God. And that's why Jesus was saying to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Now, if he's a child of God already, he don't need to be born again to be a child of God. Because he's already born a child of God. But nobody is born a child of God except Jesus. <laughs> you get it? All of us were born or born as children of men. Born as those who are born in sin. Hallelujah. But he's born, born of the Holy Spirit. As Joseph was told, the seed that this Mary have is holy, for he's of the Holy Spirit. Come on, in other words, he's of God. And if he's of God, then he's son of God. Hello, somebody. And so we can't treat it like just man. He have a man body. My God, but the nature in him, hallelujah, is not like man. Who has fallen and been depraved of God and his spirit and his nature within him has been corrupted by sin. No, there's a royal holy seed that came here. And even a demon cried out, I know who you are. Holy one of God. Amen. And that holy one come to make us holy. So we're not having no excuse to say we are sinners saved by grace and still sinning. That ain't working. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. And in sin you are lost. Come on. But you can't be in Christ and lost. Ah, come on now. And you can't be in Christ and in sin. Both don't go together. He came to take away your sin. He was manifested to do what? Take away our sin, and in him there is no sin. Come on. This was rightly so declared in 1 John 3 from 1 to 6. We take the whole context there to give personal understanding. We say, not all are children of God. It's John starts out here to speak to the saints, and he says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called what children of God therefore the world does not know us so like we are the world we are God's children 
No. Michael Jackson might sing that, but that's not what scripture said. Uh -uh, we are not the world, we are God's children. No, not so. He said, the world does not know us. He says, we are God's children. But he said, the world does not know us. It is obvious then that the world is not God's children. Because they don't know God's children. Watch that. And furthermore, he says, why don't they know us? Because it did not know him. They don't know him. They don't what? Know him. So he says, beloved, when? Now, when we are. Now we are children of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. Huh? But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. Why? For we shall see him as he is. Come on now. Now look at this verse 2 of 1 John 3. It says we are children of God now. But yet still he says it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. If this is the same as just being children of God, then anyone see this will say yes, that's our child of God. Look. But he said no, we don't know. My God, what a child of God really look like until you see God. And no, no one don't see God yet. Come on now. So it says, when he is revealed, you see, we, that's where it says, we are going to be changed. You get the thing now. So we still look like children of men. Because we have on this natural human body. Hello. But when he appears, when he what? Appears, when he is revealed, he says, we shall be like him. We shall be what? Like, that's what Paul was talking about when he says, this mortal shall put on what? Immortality. And he says, we shall all be changed. We shall all be, oh, come on. But the change is not for everybody. The change is for those who are children of God. Watch it. Come on now. So that's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15. Hallelujah. Glory to God. From verse 50 to 53. He says, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. He said, you can't inherit God's kingdom with this human body come on now huh he says you, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God with this body why because this human body ages and anything that ages grow old and anything that grow old dies come on Jesus doesn't ages he's the same yesterday today and forever you get the thing so he says you got to understand this it's not according to this body that we have on now that we are going to inherit the kingdom so he says this body shall be changed huh so he says there are some of us who would pass on which he says they died and some who remain when the lord comes but he says among those who passed on and those who remain who are children of God, we shall all be changed. We shall what? All be changed. Huh? So when he says all be changed, that's not for everybody. That's not the world. The world who died in their sin, they will regain back that flesh and blood body on resurrection day God will raise them up with that same flesh and blood body but they cannot inherit the kingdom of God with that flesh and blood body they are only raised up only to be condemned raised up to be cast both body and soul into the lake of fire which John calls the second death it's in also in Revelations 19. Revelations 20 verse 11. Hallelujah. Verse 11 to 12. Yes. 
he says then i saw a great white throne we're just showing you the verse we'll carry you back where we're taking from he says then i saw a great white throne him who sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found what no place for them remember the lord talked about his disciples that he's going to prepare a place for them but what happened to those who are not his disciples there is no place found for them hold on there was what it says and i saw what the dead small and great standing before god books were open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were what written in the books come on give me more and he says the sea gave up the dead who were in it death and Hades delivered up what the dead who were in them and they were judged each one what according to his works now they tell us it's not according to works the works have nothing to do with it it's just mercy well you, you ain't find out <laughs> then death and Hades were what cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and anyone not found written in the book of life was what cast into the lake of fire this is the same thing jesus was saying to disciples don't fear the one who can only destroy the body but fear the one who can what destroy both body and soul in hell so jesus had told them to go and spread the word declare the word though the world don't want to hear it though they'll be mocked for it scorned for it persecuted for it abused for it lied on for it come on somebody cheated and mistreated because of it he says don't fear them because what some will even be killed for it you get what i'm saying but then some might be say because my life is at stake and i'm going to say nothing so the lord was saying to his disciples hold on you have to say it you hear what i tell you the lord saying to them you have to open your mouth and speak what i tell you to speak whether they want to hear it or not and you know they get annoyed first then they get angry next then they want to get violent what the lord said to as he said to to, to timothy speak the word in season and out of season whether they want to hear it or not come on let the word be declared come on somebody but nowadays they're getting quiet they hardly even want to say amen make anybody hear them people they bust bad with louder street but when somebody say amen they look if they're mad when they cause bad with their sound but when they say hallelujah they gone crazy come on now but the word of god say preach the word be ready in season and out of season convince rebuke exhort with all long suffering and teaching come on somebody and it sure say lot of them who was your friend not going to be your friend anymore you see why some christian have not seen a friend they stop preach the word so they mellow out with them well because they may come and tell us they may see you only laugh with me i say why i saw your turn huh but would jesus do that jesus would rebuke jesus would speak out against sin why you think they crucify him they didn't crucify him for the miracles they didn't crucify him for turning water to wine feeding a multitude with fish and loaves for causing blind to see deaf to hear lame to walk dumb to talk 
dead to be raised back. None of those things were the reason they crucified him. But he says, the world hates me. He says, because I speak of their evil works. And what evil do I say? In farmer, must dead. You ever hear anybody do right and say, in farmer, must dead? Anybody that live righteous and say, who, who in farm said they live righteous, must dead? No evil do I say that? Okay. But he says, whosoever choose to live godly. Come on now. What's going to happen? They are going to suffer persecution because if they hate your Lord Jesus and you're following him, something wrong if they love you. Either you're not following Jesus right. Come on, oh somebody. How they not much wrong if you know how you really the grew. Hello, somebody. Because you can't let my sin up for anyone a long time. And you just can't see how the DVD you see every kind of know. The time since you grew, not true. But anyone around you often is either you're supposed to annoy the devil all time. Oh, come on, somebody. You're supposed to annoy the devil all time and get Jesus in him. And if you don't want no Jesus, he must left you. But someone keep them all. And evil company. Corrupt good manners. Hello, somebody. Some used to love going to church. And the company them say go to church too often. And they stop go so often till now they not go at all. Now when you see them, they say church not their heart. Hello, somebody. So me ask them if the pastor in there too. And the evangelist and the prophet. And the teacher. Wait in there. Come on. Because there's a house of worship. God call you to come to. That you'll be trained in the word. Trained and mentored. Encouraged and taught in the ways of God. Hello, somebody. And all are not preachers. All are not prophets. All are not apostles. All are not evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So you must submit as a child of God and the leadership that Jesus put in the church. What the world said, no. You know God himself. We don't need nobody to teach me. Hello. But Jesus himself gave to the church. Hello. Who built the church? Who built the church? Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He's still the head of the church. And no matter how you see church one go on, who that now go on right soon get expelled. But he's still the head of the church. No matter how you see some pastor they go on and do some things when they're not supposed to do. Remember Jesus is still the head of the church. So that no means say, because you left that church the way that pastor they go on, you're not supposed to do what you're supposed to go on. Means you're not supposed to be part of no church again. Now you got giant kingdom all. Huh? Because you refuse to heed the voice of the Lord. And the more you do that, the further away you go from the truth. Hello? That's how the world is getting worse and worse. Come on, somebody. What God has called you out from amongst them. He has chosen you. And he says, because he has chosen you. The world hates you. Come on. What that mean? Because the Lord never chose them. <laughs> the world is not the church. Church means called out. It's ecclesia. The word for church is, a, is the called out ones. The ones sanctified and set apart 
for God's holy purpose. Come on, somebody. They used to live just like they were. But God called them to be separate from them. To live a separate life unto the Lord. To lay aside all those ungodly behaviors and tendencies and ways. And live in obedience to God. Hello, somebody. Huh? The Lord said it to his disciples in St. John 15. Verse 18 to 21. He said, if the world hates you, you know that it what? It hated me first. The world, you think the world of Jesus? You better hear this. Jesus said, it hated me first before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Come on. Yet because you are not of the world but i chose you what out of the world therefore the world hates you remember the word i said to you a servant is not greater than his master if they persecute me they will also persecute you if they kept my word they will also keep yours hello somebody you're seeing it? He says, but all these things they will do to you. Why? For my name's sake. Because they do not know him. There it is. They claim they know God. But you don't know God in sin. You know God in Christ. Jesus says, no one comes to the Father except through me. Come on. So he says, how do you know God without Christ? That's impossible. He says, all these things they will do to you for my name's sake. Because they do not know him who sent me. Jesus said, they do not know his heavenly father. Come on. He says, if I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now, they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me, hates my father also. Come on, somebody. You got it here? Yeah. He said, if I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me. Did he say both? Then both not two. Both me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Come on, somebody. They will say they have a cause, but it's not a just one. Come on. He says, this proves that they have chosen rather darkness more than light. They choose opposite what he's asking and requiring of them. They want sin and he wants them to be holy. And there's no such thing as a holy sinner. Sin has to be removed from your life for you to be holy. That's why he said, I called you out from among them. I sanctified you. I set you apart. I washed you with my blood. I filled you with my spirit. I gave you my word. You have become children of god come on somebody that's what john was saying in first john 3 that we started with he was saying what manner of love the father has bestowed on us that we should be called huh children of god he says therefore the world what the world does not know us why because it did not know him. 
They don't know him. Jesus himself says that. Come on. He says, beloved, now when, now we are children of God, it has not yet been revealed what we shall be because he says we are still in this human fleshly form. We still look as mortals among mortals. We still look like children of men. But children of God are of a different kind. Glory to God. But he said his body will be changed as we read earlier from 1 Corinthians 15. Wasn't that so? Right. And he says we'll be changed. So he says we don't know what we're going to look like until that happens. He says when he is revealed we shall be what? Like him for we shall see him as he is in his true form. In his what? This fleshly body that he came and died on the cross was not his true form. That's the form of men he took on. He have his own form of God in the heavenlies. Oh, glory to God. You need to understand, say it's not the same form. I love to teach this because many people don't know this part. They believe that, oh, it's just the same. Not so. Hello, somebody. In Philippians 2, uh, Philippians 2, verse 5 to 11, he said, Dear, let this mind be in you, which was also in who? Christ Jesus. Look what it said about Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, being what? The form of God, he said he was in there. It's not human form. He says, in the form is in the body and appearance of God. He says, in that form, it's not rubbery for him to claim equality with God. He's equal with God in that form. But he took on our form. That's why he said in verse 7, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form. If he have his own form and he's taking the form, it's another form he put on. Look at it. Taking the form of what? A bond servant and coming in what? What is the likeness of man? That flesh and blood body. He says, and being found in the appearance as a man. That's not flesh and blood body. He says, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of what? Death. Even the death of the cross you see he couldn't die in his form in his spiritual form no one can kill him on a cross but he can die in human form on a cross flesh and blood can be put to death on that cross but you can't put spirit to death on the cross God is a spirit oh come on somebody and even being a spirit, he has his form. Glory to God. Can I talk to somebody? So he say he put on our form. Huh? And in our form, it was limiting certain things he could do because he's in our form. You see, God never sleeps. No, sir. Never slumber, but Jesus sleeps. Fell asleep in the boat, they had to wake him up. He had still the boat full in with water. That was deep sleep. <laughs> that they had to wake him and say, Master, care us now not that we perish. Come on. They thought they were going to drown. And he's sleeping in the bottom of the boat. But he's tired. And he's sleeping. But the word of God said, God never sleep, he never slumber. So how was he sleeping? You see, in our form, that is the response. Because though he's God in human form, he's still experiencing a life in that form. Come on, somebody. You're a spirit, a human spirit. But if a human spirit was in a fish, you'd be operating like a fish. No matter how much you want to be human. If your spirit was in a dog, you still be operating like a dog. Though some of them going on like they into one body a dog too. Uh, 
And some of them they go on like a fish. Hallelujah. Praise God. But, <laughs> but, but we want persons to understand that the body then turns the kind of life you have. Doesn't it? You're in an ant, you'll be living like us here in this place. You'll be looking us for our foot bottom. In, in other words, the, the farm you're in determines the kind of life you have. And the farm is speaking about the body. The farm is speaking about what? The body. Right, so it's through that body that was broken, through that body that was torn, through that body that, that, that was nailed to the cross, salvation came to us. Come on, somebody. Hello. Yes. So we want us to understand that body, Paul says, is not the body we are going to be raised up with. He says there are different kinds of body, as he said in 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 39 to 41, it says, all flesh is not the same flesh. And remember I say, flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God, but it says, all flesh is not the same flesh. The fleshly bodies, all fleshly bodies are not the same. He said, there's one kind of flesh, that is one flesh of man, then there's flesh of animals, another flesh of fish, another birds, different kind of flesh. Different kinds. Come on. And it says there are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. Heavenly one and earthly ones. And it says, but the glory of the celestial one and the glory of the terrestrial one is another. He said they don't share the same kind of glory. Man still has glory in this physical form. But it comes quickly like when... A, flowers blossom and bloom and then it fade away. He comes to the peak of his glory and strength and beauty and then just everything starts go downhill from that. And that is spoken of in where we can use to show you that. But the glory of man. First Peter 1. First Peter 1 verse 1. Verse 24. He says, all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man. Does man have glory? See there? All the glory of man as the flower of the grass. We say it fades away quickly. The grass withers and the flowers what? Falls away. Even flowers have glory. When it comes fully blossom and open and shows its beauty. Then afterwards it wimp and wither and fade away. So it says all flesh and blood and fleshly physical creatures have a point of glory. But after that it passes away. Everything in the physical is temporary. But he says, God have a space for us. That is eternal. Hello, somebody. And he has a body for us. That is eternal. Come on, somebody. And he has a kingdom for us. That is eternal. And he has treasures laid up for us. That is eternal. Can I talk to somebody? And he has life for us. That is eternal. This is what he has for his children. Now those who reject his son. Don't have such a claim. Because only those who receive him. Gain the power to become what? Children of God. That's what he's saying. St. John 1. Verse 10 to 13. He says he was in the world. And the world was what? Made through him. And the world did not know him. He came to his own. His own did not receive him. But as many as what? In other words, anybody who received him. What did he do for those who received him? To them who received him he's talking about. He gave the right to become children of God. That's not given to everybody. Is given to those who receive him. He gives them the right to what? To become. If they were children of God, they don't need the right to become children again. Come on, somebody. They're not born children of God by their parents. 
Because he says, these now, he said, they were become children of God through receiving Christ. Come on now. The Son of God, the Word that became flesh and dwell among us. You got it? So he says then, who were born, these children, he says, were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh. There it is. Nor of the will of man. How they were they born? They're born of God. So he tell you what they're not born of first. Then he tell you who they're born of. Who received Christ. He said, they were born of God. They were born of who? Born of God. And verse 14 tell you the word that they received. The one they received who John said is the word that was with God. That was God that was with God in the beginning. He said, the word became flesh. That's why it says, he put on human form. He dwelt among us. And we beheld what? His glory. The glory as of what? The only begotten of the father. Only begotten means only one born of him. But did he remain the only one born? No, he said, as many as received him. He gave them the right to become so. He said they were born not of flesh, nor of the will of man, nor blood, but they are born of God. Got it? So it did show that they were also born of God. But Christ then would be declared as the firstborn. Christ would be declared as what? The firstborn among many brethren. So we all as brothers and sisters to Christ now share the same father. You get it? Hello, somebody. So that's why he's saying, we don't know what we shall be when he appears because we have not seen him in that glorious form yet. We are awaiting that return for when he will come in all his glory. Come on. And he won't be coming back with this flesh and blood body. <laughs> Come on, because we already say flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. He already said it and he's not taking it back. Right, so it's a different body. He's coming with a glorified body. He's coming in his full form. And he says, we shall be like him. We will be changed to share in the same form. Hello, somebody. And what does he say in verse 3? of John 3 verse 3 first John 3 verse 3 everyone who has this hope everyone who what has this hope in him what do they do there is the cleansing there is the training there is the point where we're being equipped you see it it's not merely just saying I believe I'm a child of God a training is involved for you to become you see what I'm saying? Hallelujah. When you were not trained for your sins to be washed away. That was just came by just believing on the Lord. That is atoning blood took your sin away. That made you a saint. That made you a what? A saint. But being made a saint means that your sins being forgiven don't make you a son. That's what many don't know. Just the same way a person who have the right to vote, that don't mean say they vote. Somebody who have the right to marry don't mean say they married. So having the right to become a child of God don't mean say you are a child of God already because you have the right to become. That's why there's a training. And most jump that part. They don't want no training. They don't want no training. They man, God beat me already. <laughs> Not so. Come on, somebody. I said there's a training involved. It's not merely just believing that Jesus is Lord and you are God beat me. Not so. The devil believed that Jesus is Lord. And that don't make him God's child. James himself said demons believe and tremble. But they're still demons. So just believe in said Jesus is Lord and make you safe. Demons know his Lord. That's why we command them in the name of Jesus. They have to come out. They know his Lord. They believe and know it is so. Come on. But you can't just believe that and say you're in this thing. The Lord said you must 
be born again so what did jesus say in john 8 verse 30 to 36 we use this to show you say it's not merely just believing james said it to in james 2 verse 23 that was just flashed on the screen that it is not merely just believing and where did james get it from from jesus jesus taught him that and he's teaching us what jesus taught him james said it that in james 2 verse 19 to 21 he says you believe that there is one god you do well he said that's good but he said even demons believe and tremble that means the demons save <laughs> demons believe they believe so if he's believing make they save why do not save he says no but he says but do you want to know oh foolish man that faith without works is what dead was not abraham our father justified by works when he offered isaac his son on the altar it's just when he believed or did he do something by his works you see he says so he says scripture was fulfilled why is it because do you see faith was working to get that with his works in other words he didn't just believe he didn't just believe the word he obeyed the word now some can believe jesus is christ and still don't obey him that's why we say it's not just believing make your child a god you hear what we're telling you right so it says do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect in other words faith produced the correct results when he have action corresponding actions that agree with his faith so it says scripture was fulfilled which says when was scripture fulfilled by his obedience he says abraham believed god and it was accounted to him for what righteousness have to do with righteous works he was called the friend of god or is he called friend of god jesus said you are my friend if you do what i command you to do it's not because you believe in me it's cause for you to do the work huh so he says you see then that a man is what justified by works not by faith only believing only don't make your child a god you have to that belief must result in obedience children of god are called the children of obedience the children of the devil are called the children of disobedience all of us were disobedient but god has called us to christ to learn from him and he's not disobedient see that's why we call followers of christ hello somebody huh so come on now move with me hallelujah so we know then he then shows that there is a means for us to understand huh understand that it's not merely just belief but it must carry the what corresponding actions and jesus said it in the john 8 we we're talking about john 8 hallelujah from verse 30 to 36 it says as he spoke these words what many believed in him don't they believe in him don't you see it written there then jesus said to those jews who believed him so he's speaking to the one who believed in him he's not speaking to unbelieving ones now he's speaking in those who believe in him but he said just he didn't say well you believe in me that make your child of god no he says here is the terms you must go through the training now you believe you must accept the training this is where teaching come in now to teach you and train you how to become hello 
a child of God. He says, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, here is the condition. He used the word, if, if you do what? If you do what? Come on, I'll peep it on the screen. If you do what? If you abide in my word, what is his word? His teachings, his doctrines. He says, you are my disciples. Indeed. In other words, that's how you're going to prove that you're truly being discipled are trained by him. Because he trained you to become sons. It's not abracadabra, you believe? You are son of God. I will then tell you at the altar until you say so. He no go so. Not so at all. So he says, not so. He said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Come on. Means that you're truly proving that you are discipled by me. Watch now. He says, then what will be the result of that? You will know the truth. There it is. And the truth shall what? Make you free. Now they didn't understand what he meant by make you free. So they answered him and said, we are Abraham's descendants and I've never been in bondage to anyone. So how can you say you'll be made free? In other words, if we're free already, how can we be free again? Because they're thinking he's talking about slavery to some man. But he wasn't talking about slavery to no man. He's talking about slavery to sin. And this is what Jesus said. So Jesus is teaching them. Isn't that so? Jesus is teaching them. And he says, now, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is not whoever committed sin. If it's whoever committed sin is a slave of sin, then none could be Jesus' disciples. But he's talking about those who is trained, he said, they are trained to come out of that life to live as he lived. That's why he says, whosoever commits is that present continuous tense. Means they commit now and they're going to commit later. They are still practicing sin. Watch this. So it says, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. He don't say a slave of sin is his disciple. No, he said that's a slave of sin. That's not a slave of Christ. <laughs> he said, a slave does not abide in the house forever. What house is that? In the household of God. He said, yes, this may be in the household of God. But God not keeping them. Because slaves are not allowed to inherit the kingdom. It must be those who are born of God that inherit the kingdom. It's God's children. It's God's what? Children that inherit the kingdom. So he says, that, that, look what he said. Slave does not abide in the house forever. But a son abides forever. He don't say the son speaking of himself. Look at the son in verse 35 and look at the son in verse 36. You will see one with common S and the other with capital S to show you when he's speaking about himself. That's the difference there in verse 36. Verse 35 he's saying anyone who is born of God is going to abide in the house of God forever. Anyone who's not born of God going to be kicked out. Watch the thing. They will not remain in the house forever. You get it? The same thing David said in Psalms 1. He says the, the, the unrighteous are not so. The ungodly are not so. They are like what? The chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not what? Stand in the judgment. Now sin as we are in the congregation of the righteous. So which congregation of the righteous in talking about? Is those who are his children. Come on. They have been made righteous through Christ. 
They are not still sinners. Come on now. They have been made what? Righteous through Christ. But this wasn't just believing on Christ. This was believing and obeying. Huh? Believing and what? Ah, so it says the ungodly are not so. They are like the chaff that the wind drives away. It says ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Means that they will not up, stand up against the judgment of God. They will be condemned in judgment. And it says what? Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. They will be removed like the tears are removed from the wheat. Like the sheep are separated from the gods. He says, they will be removed from the Lord's house. He did say that. For he says, for the Lord knows what? The way of the righteous, but what? The way of the ungodly shall perish. Come on. He's not saying the ungodly going to be saved. He said, the ungodly shall perish. But the righteous, he says, shall be saved. Come on now. Now they're telling them, say, no, God, no one, no righteous. He's seen as he want. <laughs> Somebody fool them. Because he says, he calls sinners to repentance. So if the sinners repent, they don't remain sinners. They turn from that life of sin to practice what is righteous. They are being trained to live as children of God. God not just doing no upper that be a magic over your boop. Watch with the magic one and boop you in heaven. Not long ago, sir. You have to go through training. Tell somebody you have to go through what? That, that, that's what is spoken of in, in um, Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12 verse 5 to 11. Yes, Hebrews 12 verse 5 to 11. Says you have forgotten the what? exhortation which speaks to you as to son what did he say my son do not despise what the chastening of the lord nor be discouraged when you are what rebuked by him for whom the lord loves what he do with them he chastens and scourges you know what it is to scourge to whip violently when they send Jesus to scourges, to the scourgers, that's how the stripes were on his back. He's not war paint. And he says, watch it, he says, for whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges. That's the training. Scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, no, your son, no, no, no one no training. They say, no man, they will learn God by themselves. Come at church and that too much regulation and people, they tell him what to do. But then turn it till him perish. He says, if you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there who my father does not chasten? Come on now. And he said, but if you are what? If you are without chastening, you are a child of God. No, he said, if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, all there is, all who truly submit to the discipline and training in the house of God, all have become partakers, he says, then you who are without it are illegitimate and not sons. They have a word for it called bastards. Our jacket, our vest, and whatever else. He says, furthermore, we have had what? Human fathers who corrected us. When the human father corrected us, when we submitted to the discipline. That's what he said. He says, and we pay them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and live? For they, speaking of your human fathers, indeed for a few days chasing us as seemed best to them. But he, speaking of our heavenly father, chastened us for what? For our profit. Why did he chasten us? That we may be partakers 
of his holiness. You can't be holy without that training. That scourging. That discipline. God appoint trainers in the house to train you. And you say no. You want to know if yourself. If you have church in your heart. And you know right from wrong. And ain't nobody to teach you nothing. Not so. God never tell you that. It's your flesh tell you that. And the world tell you that. And you're following the world. And those who follow the world will perish with the world. Come on. Because the whole world is under the sway of Satan. Come on. That's why he call you out from among them. And separated you to himself. To live according to his commandments. Come on now somebody. He says now no chastening seems to be what? Joyful. That's why I guess they don't want to come and get it. They can't stay long in a church because it at it painful. Hmm? That's what he says. It is painful. Nevertheless, afterwards, there's a what? Afterward, it yields what? The peace of a fruit of what? Righteousness to everybody. No, to those who have been trained. There's the training. Those who have been trained by it. So who the Lord put to train you in this discipline? Jesus was sent to train his disciples. Disciples were appointed as apostles. And the apostles raised up other leaders that were them. Prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers who were there as trainers to the saints. That's what Jesus said in Ephesians 4 verse what? 11 to 16. He himself gave some to be. Who gave them? Christ himself, he says, gave some to be what? Apostles, prophets, evangelists, some pastors and teachers. What were they? Who were they given to? There it is. Though they are saints, they are given to the saints. They are not given to the world. Who are they given to train? The saints, there it is, for equipping the saints for the work of the ministry, for edifying the body of Christ. What is the body of Christ? The church. Till we all come to what? The unity of the faith and of the what? Knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. He says, Christ said that's how long he's giving apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. He's giving them until we come into the unity of the faith and into the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. In other words, there's a training involved that he says to bring you to maturity in the things in Christ. And trainers are appointed to do so. By Christ himself, who is the head of the church. Hello. And he says, why are they given such? That we will no longer be children tossed to and fro. In other words, we will not be immature, unlearned, ignorant, untaught, underdeveloped. Come on, he said, when you're like that, you're too easily influenced by everyone who come and beat pan and say them a prophet and teacher. And they soon fool you up in some false doctrine and cult and get your neck cut with some cow. Because I say, you need to understand there is a calling. You see? He said, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men. In cunning craftiness of what? Deceitful plotting. But what? Speaking the truth in love. That's how we grow up into what? All the things into who? Him who is the head. Who is that? Christ. From whom the whole body. That's the church. Joint and knit together. By what every joint supplies. According to what? Effective working by which every part does its share causes what the growth of the body for the edifying of itself 
in love. Come on, somebody. You're seeing it? You're getting it? He's saying then, it's through Christ we get that training. And Christ appoint trainers to train those who are saints. That's why Jesus was saying to Peter, who he appointed as apostle, to lead the fishing business and say, feed my sheep. Take care of my sheep. Take care of the lambs. Lovest thou me more than these, Peter? And Peter loved fish and loved fishing. But the Lord said, this is the call now to tend my sheep. Come on now. And Peter gave himself to prayer and to fasting and to the word to teach and to feed God's people until his dying breath. Come on, somebody. That shows what he was called to do to equip God's people and train them for that glorious day when the Lord shall appear, that they be ready for his return. Huh? So there's a training involved. Now they say, God, forget about training. You can't just say, Lord, forgive me my sin and you're safe and you're gone at heaven. You know that then say? Yes, man, that's why enough of them to do deathbed repentance. Lord, forgive me, I'm in Ghana, heaven. Poof. And go and hear the Lord say, Depart from me, I know you're not. All of the rest in peace, you're right, pan in tomb, now go save him. All of the Christian songs you sing in funeral, now go turn him back. They are early born, they listen to you sing, saying, Save. Because the Lord said, Whatsoever man sow it. So why is so free? Things I just forgive mama sin and gonna him. Things I just saw. You have a labor. If you're going to be rewarded, what did you do to be rewarded? God got to reward those who labor for him, and those who don't labor still get the same reward. Then what will be his purpose of laboring? And you see, your labor is not in vain. Come on, somebody. So how would he say, Well done, good and faithful servant? If you wasn't good and you wasn't faithful, God go life here. You have a work to do. It's not nobody fool about you. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll see everything, everything done. No, no, go. So that's where your training starts. That's where you're endless. But I know everybody endless go and stay. The Lord described the kingdom of God like a dragnet, a large dragnet that was thrown into the sea. And catch all kind of fish. But he said when he bring it ashore. He take out the good one and throw back the bad one back in the sea. You know read say Jesus says so. So now everybody come in and stay in. God go and throw out some. That's why I said the sinners shall not be among the righteous. They are going to be removed. He's going to separate them like the sheep from the goats. Like the wheat from the tears. Come on. Jesus said it in Matthew 13, verse 41 to 43. He said, The Son of Man will what? Send out his angels into his kingdom, and they shall remove from his kingdom all those who practice lawlessness, who offend, and those who practice what? Lawlessness, and will cast them where? Into the furnace of fire. And he said, they'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth. Who going to shine after they remove? The righteous. So everybody is sinners. No, you have righteous and you have sinners. They are not the same. The righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, as Jesus said. Who have ears to hear this? Let them hear it. He said, who want to listen? Let them listen. Who don't want to hear me, then go on. Then go and perish with the rest. Come on, somebody. Because God said, how oh, does faith come? Faith come by hearing. So if you don't want to hear, who you know, must they hear somebody? So he said, they were of the world, hear the world. Because they are of the world. Those who are of God, hear us. You never hear John say that. 
Those who are of God hear us. First John 4, verse 4 to 6. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Who is the them? The world. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Who do you think is in the world? Satan. He says, they are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world. And guess what happened? The world hears them, it go viral. The world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error we know those who are of God and we know those who are of the devil by how they respond to those who are of God come on somebody that's why we said if they love the Lord they ain't going to love we but if they don't love the Lord they're not going to love us not true the same contempt they have to the Lord they will show to us the same disregard for him will come to us that's why David said the, the anger that they have for the Lord has fallen upon him. Come on. Because he know once you love the Lord, those who don't love the Lord will start to love you less and less. Because you remind them of the Lord. You get the thing. And if you remind them of the Lord, then it means that either they start to love the Lord and love you. Are they going to start to hate the Lord more and hate you too? Come on now. So, so that's why the scripture says, Why then did Cain kill his brother Abel? Is him brother, you know? Born from same mother and father. Why would he kill his brother? What did his brother do to him? He said, Because Cain works were evil. And his brother's works was righteous. He ate him for his righteous behavior. Same oh and God it today still say. Infam I must dead. No one who live righteously now say infam I must dead. Because when you tell Panny good what they do they now when you kill for it. I would do wrong, no one nobody tell Pan what they do. You get the thing? Hello, somebody. Yes, and of course, that's in 1 John 3, verse 11 and 12. He says, for this is the message we heard from the beginning, that we should what? Love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one. Who is the wicked one? The devil. So he said, Cain was of the wicked one. Cain was of the devil and murdered his brother. He said, why did he murder him? Because his work were evil and his brother's righteous. It's not righteous people who want to kill wicked people, you know. It's wicked people who want to kill good people. You know, see what's happening in the world. Come on now. It wasn't Jesus who want to kill none of them. It's them who want to kill him. Because he's speaking against their evil works. And telling him to repent. And they don't want to hear that. Because they love what they're doing. Come on. But he can't leave them alone. He can't be in their midst and just leave them alone. So. Can't sit down and watch a man drink poison. And go on like I don't know. Just a drink you and him this year. Come on. Now. You have to talk up. And if you love when they drink. You go back say you talk up and they interrupt him drink. Eh? You yeah, tell him to have grandma's own and they go and like in a drink nice wine. You understand, sir? So what you go do with that? You can't sit at the table and drink with him. Because you know when you drink, they kill him. And now go sit and watch him, they kill himself before you. You rather know saying, go somewhere else, go do it. Or ah, you leave. But you don't want to sit and they watch that. Come on now. But the world, while we sit and they watch, leave me alone, I'm going to do what do. You do what you want to do, and we do what we don't do. Eh? We have to keep preaching the word. Come on, somebody. We have to keep speaking the truth. Even if we're dead faith. 
The Lord said he'll raise us up back again. Come on, somebody. This mortal will put on immortal. Hallelujah. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Hallelujah. And shall be caught up to meet him in the air. What you say? And we shall behold him face to face. Come on, stand him. We're going to pray. It's time to release you. Glory to God. I'm telling you, we got to know who we are in Christ. The world doesn't honor us for doing this. But God honors us for doing it. Those who honor the Lord, the Lord will honor them. Come on, somebody. Hello. And it's good to know that our life is in the hands of the one who still the waters. What do you say? Come on, give God the praise in here. Ah, come on, let's worship him. You don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Trouble they don't last always. Oh, for there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe the tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. With Jesus, I can take it. With him, I know I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. Woo, come on. So when your tears and trials, they seem to get you down. And all your friends and loved ones are nowhere to be found. Remember there's a friend named Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, come on, just lift your hands and say, hey, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your, come on. With Jesus, I can take it. With him I know I can stand No matter what may come my way My life is in your hands Hey, I know that I can Come on somebody No matter Come on My life is in My life is in your hands Hey with Jesus I can take it With him I know I can stand No matter what may come my way My life is in Woo. No matter what may come my way Come on Put it in the hand of Jesus No matter what may come my way Hallelujah. He's more than able. Come on. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hand. Come on, praise him in here. You can surrender to him. He won't let you fall. He won't let you down. The devil is trying to scare you. To make you think you're going to make a fool of yourself. Trying to serve God now. But God is able to save and to keep and to satisfy every need you have. Trust and believe with all your heart. And be willing and obedient that he will lead you in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Come on somebody. Anybody want to come? Yield it to Jesus. 
Glory to God. You the life in his hands. Come on. I know that I oh I know that I can stand no matter what. Hey, my life is in. Hey, with Jesus I can take it. With him I know I can stand no matter what. Hey, my life is in. Go. Oh. Yes, Lord. We cannot do it of ourselves. But with you, all things are possible. You come to give us the power to become children of God through your word and your Holy Spirit working in us to cleanse, to renew, to revive, to transform us into true children of God. It is your work within us. But you are not forcing this work upon us. You require our participation and our cooperation to let the work be done. And so even now, as we come to you, Father, magnify your name. Hoshabasa. Jesus Christ. You said name him Jesus for he'll save his people from their sin. Save us from our sin. And give us new life within. Take the pain away. The hurt away. The shame away. The failures. Yoko Shabasa. Fill us with your spirit. Life anew. And keep us, O oh God, by your mighty power, submitted to your leader, to your leadership in our life, as you guide us into all truth. We will know the truth, and the truth will set us free. He said, Who the Son set free is free indeed. For you said, For this purpose was Christ manifested to take away our sin. And in Him there is no sin. Whoever abides in Him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen or known Him. We give it all to you. We don't want to be left behind. We don't want to fool ourselves with the world and believe it's all right. You're calling us to newness of life in Christ Jesus. No more sin. For he said, he that practice righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. Glory to God. Those who have such hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Remove every thought, every imagination, every feeling, every view that exalts itself against your knowledge. We bring it into captivity and to obedience to you. Every thought we capture and bring in obedience to you right now. And say, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Oh, Shamasa. For yours is the kingdom. The power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen and amen. Yes, God. Transform us inside out. In the name of Jesus. Glory to your name. Peace and grace. Grace over your life. Grace over your life, son. In the name of Jesus. Grace over your life, my sister. Favor. Unmerited favor. God's power flowing through you. It is his power working in us. Both to will and to do his good pleasure.
Come on, give him praise right now. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Rabba Bush. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We appreciate what you've done, Lord. We cannot do it of ourselves. But we welcome your work within. And we know you who began a good work. You're able to perform it. I pray that you lead them and connect them under godly leadership to submit to the training that you have in the house of God to develop them into true sons and daughters of the true and living God that they will not come short on any gift nor fall short on any fruit that is necessary for them to be declared children of God so that your glory will show up, O oh God, in an awesome way. We yield it all to you as we claim the victory, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise one more time. Give him the praise in the house. Somebody blessed him here. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Praise God. Give you a chance to sow and then we release you. Praise God. As you do so, we'll give the final word to those who are watching online. Those who are watching online and watching Increasing Faith Deliverance Ministries International. We are 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. Wanted to know the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And believe me, there's so much the Lord want to deposit within us but he said if you abide in my word then you are truly he says truly my disciples because you see there are other disciples that were following him but then in john 6 verse 66 he says those disciples left him and followed him no more so would they still be considered disciple no so you see what he's saying if you abide in my word you are my disciples indeed. Is that training involved to be truly children of God? You are not just children of God just by belief. You are children of God by you being molded and shaped and trained through the word of God and his Holy Spirit. Amen. That's the birthing channel of God to reproduce children after his kind. Praise God. So you need to know. That's why the Lord said that which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. Come on. We have a book we release out there. It's on Amazon.com. It's called The Gospel of the Kingdom, subtitled The Gospel that Jesus Preached. We have a hardcover copies here for those who want to have it to boost their faith. We also have it on Amazon that you can order anywhere around the world. Just type in Amazon.com on the search box. Richard V. Fig and the book will come up and you can order it anywhere around the world. It's called the Gospel of the Kingdom, subtitled The Gospel that Jesus Preached. And it's good to have clarity about the Gospel that Jesus Preached. Even if you think you know it already, I believe that God will open your eyes to see further and deeper truths in the Word because the Holy Spirit is still working to bring us in deeper levels of grace, deeper levels of anointing, deeper levels of fellowship, and communion with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And none should be refused. It should be something we gravitate to and grow in because we don't know what the future holds and what kind of test we'll face coming along that will try the very best of us. And only those who are truly faithful and grounded will last the test. Amen. And so we encourage you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. You want to know more about us? And I get more of teachings. You can send a friend's request to Richard Fagan on Facebook. He'll be plugging into our five live stream teachings on Facebook each week. This is one of them. And of course, we encourage persons to uh, get into the other, which is YouTube, to, uh, where we have edited and put more scripture to it, that you can use it as a study manual to grow in the faith and understand, of course, that God is giving you line upon line, precept upon precept, building your faith gradually and surely in the word. Amen. 
And of course, I believe great things are going to happen as you walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Praise God. Those who want to know more about us, check out our website. It's increasingfaithintl.org. That's our church's website, increasingfaithintl.org. Those who in front of the ministry want to sow to the ministry can sow to the website. Information is there. And also those who want to get more of the teachings, we have a love gift for you. It's called our daily devotional. Praise God. Daily devotional is teachings we have day to day in the house. That's not live streamed, but we put it in script form, made it into an ebook, day to day dated teachings with scriptural references and expository explanations. They have the scripture that will build your faith. It's written there and it's also put in monthly editions so you can get for the month of November or October or September going back to last year, January. We have it dated by months and days. And so we put it in a, a package that can be downloaded to you for the month and you open it daily to have daily studies that you can do privately or with company to build the faith of those who will hear you. Amen. So the powerful tool in your Sunday school or Sabbath school or in your private study or in group studies with others to be a powerful tool to you to build your faith and the faith of others in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So we encourage you to get it as free. All you need to do is request it by the number on the screen. Number is 876 Yes, 876-839-9390. 876-557-2427. And also 876-525-6757. The information is on the screen. You can get it and read, order anything you want there or reach out to us. We are, of course, here to encourage you in the faith and be the most holy faith in the Lord. So, of course, you can reach out to me by the numbers there. Looking forward to hear from you. Until next time, be strong in the Lord. In the power of his might. You're blessed today. Thank you all for coming and for those who are watching online. Thank you for doing so and for encouraging us to do the same. And so we continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. May the Lord have up his countenance upon you. And give you his peace. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. Bless you all. In Jesus name. Amen.